Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with this Sunday morning guest. Jan, how you doing, buddy? Doing well. Thanks for having me, Michael. Thank you for episode one, where you kind of introduced us to our story. Uh, the fact that, uh, you know, you, you uh, got a great degree, uh, you sacrificed in the beginning, you moved back home to pay off your debt. Uh, you proved that you could do a fixer upper and then burn the boat after one flip. So ballsy, got to like it. Uh, and then we took this story all the way up into your first mobile home park. And that's what this video is going to be about mobile home parks. Uh, the first thing I got to ask is you said you were marketing for a year. I'm guessing you were doing mailers or cold calling or virtual assistants. What, what, what was it like when you were out looking for mobile home parks? Sure. Yeah. You know, we've, we've kind of tried everything off market, right? So mm -hmm. direct mail is the obvious one. Cold calling is the most obvious one because it's free, right? Mm -hmm. It just costs your time. Mm -hmm. um, we've also done ringless voicemails. We've done text campaigns and text blasts. We've done SEO and pay-per-click. Mm -hmm. um, we've done you know, website intake, right? And so sure, yeah. we've done a little bit of everything. I would say what's most successful for us and what got us that first park, it has been cold calling. So okay. there's just, you have to know your target audience, right? And so- Oh, I, amen to that. One of the things uh, I have, my step number one is a buy box, right? Which you can call your target audience. Like you got to be focused. And that's if you're a wholesaler flipper, buy and hold is you got to, you got to know your I don't know. I call it a buy box, right? What, what, what's your target? Um, so again, let's, so I, I'd always love the first story. So tell us again about the first mobile home park. Yeah. So we were cold calling for, I mean, it took, I think nine to 12 months of cold calling and just, just, you got to just cut your teeth, right? You're not going to know what you're talking about until you do. Right. Mm. And so by making the mistakes, you know, Oh shit, don't say that again. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> And so it just took a while of, of cold calling and, and of analysis and of due diligence to, to finally land one that actually worked out. I mean, we tied one up within three months and we just fumbled completely. The seller said, I'm not working with you guys. You're not professionals. You don't own any commercial assets. Mm. And so, you know, finally we got, we got a good small one to start with after nine, nine to 12 months. Mm -hmm. um, we were negotiating real hard, you know, it was 20, 20 unit park, 20 space park. And so we, we were at the seller wanted five, 500. We got down to 450 and we're like, man, he's really stuck on this 500 number. Finally, we got down to 450. Then we drive out there for that first trip. And, um, the sellers were actually really wealthy potato farmers mm. and they hadn't been to this park or seen the park in years. I mean, it was, <laughs> <laughs> That's it was it was a mess when we got there, right? And I'm sure, yeah. I mean, I've, I've bought properties like that, yeah. That's great. That's what we want. Yeah, fun, exactly. Right? So again, they go out there. You're with them now. I actually had this on an 18-unit building one time. Uh, did they actually, did you actually get the feel that you could get a better deal at that point once they saw it? I think for showing up, you get a 10% discount. There you go, yeah. Right? And so we're like, man, they were so stuck on this 500 number for this 20 space park. And then we show up and we count the spaces. We're like, dude, this is a 30 space park. They only, Yeah. They thought it was 20. <laughs> All yeah. right. They hadn't been there in a while. They forgot. They lost. Yeah. It. They had no clue. Right. <laughs> and so it was actually a 30 space park. 26 units were there. Four spaces were empty. And so now, you know, we've been working on infilling yeah. it, but uh, we're like, now it makes sense why they were pushing yeah. so hard for that number. Right. You're like, like, suddenly it's a better deal. There's yeah. Cool. So, like, so I I've never, I've never spoken. So I may ask you some dumb questions. Please. So, yeah. so a mobile home park, like this first one, I, I'm guessing you own the land. They own the, I guess the, is it called a unit or a. Yeah. Uh, a manufactured home or unit. Sure. Yeah. Um, so that, they're, that, they're doing a lot lease from you and they, and it's not, it's not your structure. So if the structure leaks, it's not on you. Correct. Yeah. So as a mobile home park owner, and this is not always the case, but sure. ideally the case is where you have primarily what's called tenant owned homes. As you described, mm -hmm. the, the folks that live in the home, they actually own the home. You can buy a, you know, a used manufacturer home for as little as a thousand bucks and mm -hmm. as much as a new one for, you know, 150,000. Yeah. And so they own the home, we own the land and we're responsible for keeping a safe community and, yep. and, and we're, we're also responsible for the roads and the trees and, and for the utilities underground. But yeah. if the toilet leaks, that's, that's not my toilet. So I don't fix it. Got it. Well, that's cool. So, um, I, I have no idea how, how big is a 30 
I mean, are we talking four acres or what are we talking? It, we the land is in that case five acres, but uh, the thirty spaces fit on half of it, so two and a half acres. Okay, and but you're but again, so you're still responsible for the other two and a half. I don't know what's on it, trees or whatever. It's just just flat. Okay, so uh, land. Yep. Right. Yep. Okay. So yeah, we just maintain roads and utilities and and make sure it's a good community. And so okay, you know the our primary value add there was honestly just putting attention on something. I mean, just showing up is eighty yeah. percent of it, right? Yeah. And you said drive out there. Uh, are we talking hours away, or what are we talking? Yeah, this one is about two and a half, three hours away from Seattle, where I live. Okay, all right. Yeah. That's very it's cool. Washington. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. Um, so let's just uh, kind of fix. So this was 2020 now? Yeah, this is about 2000. Yes, this is, uh, this is end of 2019. Yes, early 2020. Uh -huh. Okay, all right. I'm just trying to get the timeline. So you get a seller finance deal. Is it a straight 30-year note fully amortized? Is it 30 with a 10-year balloon? What are we talking yeah, generally we are buying these mobile home parks from folks that are, you know, they want to retire. They want yeah, to get out of the game. Done. And yeah, so, yeah. and so generally they're giving us five to 10 year terms amortized yep. over 30 years. Yeah, me too. Three, yeah. Right. And so these guys gave us a five year note with, uh, we keep an option for us to be able to extend that note if we pay down principal by 50 grand. Okay. Um, at the I time like of, of that expiration. And so nice. You know, okay. It's, it's, very attractive since, again, I don't have a W-2 job. I'm not getting bank debt very easily, but sure. sellers will give me debt. Yeah. I, I, again, seller, I'm actually very, I'm telling my audience the last couple of weeks that a recession is coming. You know, I've often said winter is coming, winter is here. Uh, a lot of people hear that and they think discounts on price. I'm like, folks, you're not paying attention. The price, the price is irrelevant in the big scheme of things. Get terms get terms Absolutely. yeah Absolutely. so did you come into this with very little down how much did you did you have to put anything down we did we put down ninety thousand dollars on 450 which so is 20 percent yeah 15 percent okay. something like that all right uh, that's cool i mean that's a solid deal uh i'm just curious i've seen a lot of rent growth but i don't know what lots i don't know if lots have rent inflation or not what, what were the lot fees when you bought it and what are they now yeah they were uh 325 and now that park um about 18 months later i know because we're refinancing it now it's been about 18 months um and it is at 400 so they've right, gone so up very a little bit yeah, yeah well i guess 20 yeah, yeah I mean, it's, that's it's 20 yeah when I, I just did that i was like 75 but then i forgot the basis was 325 so right, that's 20 percent right, right? Yeah. all right so again so you're refining them out so you're going to cash the sellers out um, we are going to cash the sellers out. We now this park that we bought for 450 um is worth about a million dollars 18 months. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, that doesn't suck. It does not. Yeah. So we're, <laughs> we're pulling out about four hundred thousand dollars of of liquid cash. We we're, we're 90 into it. So, you know, our returns now become yeah. infinite, right? Yeah, As that's awesome. We're zero into it and and it'll still cash flow. Not great, but it'll still cash flow even with this new bigger debt. So you've got you've got your 90k back. Let's, you know, let's just do round numbers. You're sitting on 300 300 grand um to go do more. So, uh that's a lot of fun. And I, I trust you're just going to go out and blow it on a new Ferrari or something. Just, just go, go nuts. First comes the parks. First comes the assets. Then come the liabilities way down the line. You know? Amen. I'm just glad you said that. Uh, so this sounds like your first park. What, where do you, you know, I often, like you did earlier, right? Proof of concept is one thing, but now you got to repeat it. Where's the, uh, where's the second or third park coming? Yeah, very shortly after, you know, we, we just go harder with the cold calling, we go harder with the with the with the direct mail. And because rates are, you know, um, because we're still not really bank financeable, honestly, and because mm -hmm. rates, start you keep saying up, we who's the other we in this, I have some I have some active partners I actually don't okay. own a single prop piece of property on my own. I like okay. the accountability that comes with partnership. I like mm. collaboration. And so every single piece of property I own is with a partner. So okay. I own between 25 and 75% of every property that I own. Okay. Um, yes. Nice. All um, right. Hey, All right. They say, you know, if you want to, you want to go fast, go alone. You want to go far, go together. So. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Yeah. So that's worked well for me. It, it doesn't work well for everyone, but I do like partnerships. And so mm -hmm. we, you know, about four or five months later, we find another park again, seller finance. This one's at even nice. crazier terms. Uh, we put down 60,000 on a $634,000 park. 
So roughly um, 10%, roughly 10%, uh, 2.68% interest. Nice. Uh, fully amortized over 11 years. The seller just said, I need five grand a month to live. We said, okay, but you're going to have to give us a really low down payment and a really low interest rate because yeah. we're going to give you this, you know, very yeah. short term. Yeah. And so we said, dude, we'll get you your five grand. Sure. But here's the, here's the terms we have to play at. And he again, said, folks. Yeah. If you're not paying attention to all this, this is what's coming. I have done it. I just did a deal. Well, it was in, so it was, it was 19. So it was when that reset, when everybody thought a recession was coming, mm -hmm. I got, I got three, fourplex, no, two fourplexes, a triplex and four houses from one seller is like, I'm done. I want to get out. He, he, he thought the market was going to crash. And he said, he, same thing. He said, he, he said he needed 5,200, mm -hmm. um, 5,200. He wanted a hundred grand. And all we, all we did was we backed into it. We ended up getting an interest rate in the ones. Wow. Yeah. Nice. But he didn't care. Right. He's like, I want, I, I want the 5,200 for whatever reason, he thought he wasn't going to live past 15 years. So the note was 15 years. Mm. I was like, great done. Yeah. He didn't, didn't ask any questions. He's like, he didn't care what the interest rate was. Yeah. If you like, listen, yeah, listen to people, right? They'll just listen. What... Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Crazy. So very and cool. Of course, you know, if, this, if you're working with a young set, like, am I going to give you, you know, if you come to me, Michael, and you say, Hey, I'm going to pay you 1% on, on a million bucks. I'm like, no, cause I know I can generate a higher rate of return. Yeah. But if I'm retired and I'm done and you seem sophisticated and you seem like you're going to take over this asset yeah. and be a steward of the asset, then absolutely. I'm like, sure. Yeah. I just need my 5,200 bucks, man. Yeah. And I want to go back to your, one of your, one of the deals you locked up and you didn't get, because I want people to hear this. When you are talking terms to a seller that is later in life, you need to put on, I don't want necessarily want to call it a show, but you need to realize if you act immature or like you don't know what you're going to get, they're going to back away because they're saying yes to you, right? So you got to remember that. So again, uh, be respectful, be appreciative of the asset, do due do diligence, don't go flying by the seat of your pants, be a professional. And frankly, once you get one, the second one comes so much easier because now you have a point of reference going, see that one over there? Let me show you what we did to that one. Right. We're going to take the same care of yours. So very good. It's cool. perfect. Just just yesterday, I had an email exchange with a, with a new park we're tying up right now in Indiana. And the, the lady goes, look, like, we'll give you the, you know, the million bucks, you know, at, at 3%, but like, give us, give us a reference. And, and I was happy to. Yeah. To Which one do one. you want? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was happy to connect her with the previous sellers and they said, yep, they've made every payment on time. They're professionals. They're improving the asset. That's that's all people want to hear is like, they you're going to do right by them, right? Yeah, because the last thing that seller in Indiana wants is to foreclose on you. Now, they legally, they legally can, but they don't want to. They don't no. want the hassle. That's the last thing they want. They want a check. That's it. They want the check. Me so, <laughs> that, yeah, me too. Exactly. So the first, <laughs> So the first property were two and a half hours away. You just talked about a mobile home park in Indiana. So you are nationwide, I'm guessing? You, you'll fish anywhere? Yeah. I, I mean, majority of my portfolio is in Washington. We, I own about $20 million real estate that's primarily in Washington. Okay. Um, however, we do, if it's a sweet enough deal, we will go out of state. So, so of your $20 million, what rough, are we talking 80% in Washington, 70%? Uh, Roughly is fine. 95. We, I only own okay. one out of oh, state, in Wisconsin. And Soon to be two. Yeah, right, right. Uh, we're on we're under contract on three other parks right now that are out of state, and so okay. yeah, you know it. It will go. Well, I'll, I'll fly anywhere for for a great deal. It's fine. Okay. Right? I like that. Um, but I, I know Washington's economy and, and legislation and sure. general you know business dealings, and so it, it is easier to have some kind of continuity here. But of course, mm -hmm. I'll I'll go anywhere for a great deal. Nice. So uh, now that we're kind of at the end of the story. Uh, I don't know how you would, uh, do you count lots or how do you count mobile home? Yeah. Parks? Yeah. Lots. Yeah. How many lots are we up to at this point of the story? I own 185 lots right now. Wow. Um, the so average rents 400 bucks ish, 300. I would say average across the portfolio is probably 350. That is amazing. Very, very cool. So um, you said earlier in your intro, you're 32. I think Correct. I remember. Yeah, I just turned 32 last week. Yeah. Damn. So uh, you kind of, it seems like you found your niche. Um, this is, this is what you're focused on for the next decade is the feeling I get from you. Um, you would think that, but oh no, he's going, he's taking a right turn. 
<laughs> you know, uh, mobile home parks are great and it's great to make a couple million bucks, but it's hard to make a hundred million bucks with it. I'll be ah, honest. Ah, yeah. okay. So a couple of million bucks is not, not, not enough. No. <laughs> I love this. So, uh, so where's the right turn? Are we doing ground up development or what, what's next? I, I am. I mean, that's also great to make a couple million bucks in the right part of the market cycle, which I don't believe we're in. No, we're not I am, in I'm building seven units of, you know, pretty high end, you know, luxury new construction in Seattle right now. But that's again, just to keep the lights on, get a few mm -hmm. big checks here and there. Mm -hmm. Um, I just started a new company, with a friend and we're targeting actually large office and commercial and retail. Okay. So we just, you're gonna, you're gonna, so you're seeing what I hear you saying now is you think that's where the stress is going to be in the market. Uh, it's honestly, it's not necessarily a market dependent thing. It's an okay. asset size and quality oh, um, decision. Okay. So like parks are great, but there's even a massive park is only like, 10 million bucks, 20 million bucks, right? Mm. Whereas a really nice high-end office in a mm. downtown core is, you know, a hundred million, right? And so Got it. Got just it. to get into bigger project sizes more easily, we've, you know, I've started a new company. I'm still doing the mobile home parks, still love the asset class. I right. think I'm, I'm, I'm well attuned for a, a recession when it comes, but, yep. um, yeah, in order to get into bigger deal sizes more easily, where I'm, I started, a, you know, yet another yeah. company to to kind of to do to grow a portfolio. The, the target is a billion dollar portfolio in ten years, and it's wow. just going to be harder to get there with just like one, it. two or three million dollar park at a time. We need to start moving into ten and twenty and fifty million dollar projects. Yeah, so the goal is a billion dollar portfolio of assets. Correct. In ten years, I love Correct. this. This is awesome. I love big dreams. Love taking action. Congrats on where you've done. Um, any kind of closing thoughts on this? Cause we're going to go macroeconomics in episode three. Uh, in terms of parks, I mean, there, if you thought that you wanted cash flow and you were doing it through single family and small multifamily, just wait until you buy your first, you know, 20, 50, hundred unit park. I mean, the cash flow is really unmatched, um, in, in uncorrelated assets, same with self-storage. I mean, there's just better potential for cash flow. Once you figure it out investment principles in single family, which I still recommend to folks, start with single yeah. family, right? Uh, figure out investing and then think about, you know, how do I really maximize cash flow um, in, in other asset classes and commercial specifically, so. I love it. Congrats on all your success. We'll have to have you back a couple of times, maybe a couple of times a, a year to, to talk about this journey. It's going to be fun to watch. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Michael. You got it.